Hello and welcome everyone. This is Aman Allah, your course instructor for project planning and controlling using Primavera P6. Uh, today's topic is about uh, schedule network analysis. This uh, is theoretical uh, lecture. Once uh, we uh, we have uh, prepared our schedule, we perform schedule network analysis to have final schedule. This may include critical path method, schedule compression, modeling, resource optimization, critical chain method. We will discuss all of these one by one. So first one is uh, critical path method. Critical path met method involves determining longest path in the network. The longest path in the network is critical path. This gives us idea of how long the schedule will take, which activities we need to focus more. We need to focus more on the activities which are on critical path because these activities changes in duration of these activities can change in duration of the schedule. Critical path method provides vehicle to compress schedule during project, project planning and whenever changes are made. If we have to make uh, changes to the duration of the project, we have to make changes uh, to the activities on critical path. This is easiest way to find critical the easiest way to find critical path is to identify all paths and add their duration. The path which takes longest is the critical path. A schedule may have more than one critical path. If it is so then more risk is involved. Critical path have zero float. Along with critical path, we, we should also determine near critical path. Near critical path is the path which is uh, second longest to the critical path. <coughs> if something happens and shorten critical path or lengthen near critical path, then this will become critical path. This is why we should determine critical path, uh, near critical path also. Because in some cases, uh, we make changes to the critical path uh, and because of these changes, the critical path become near critical path and near critical path becomes critical path. Now let's uh, discuss uh, float or slack. Float and slack is same thing. There are cer certain types of float, which is total, flo total float. This is the time an activity can be delayed without delaying project in date or in intermediary mi milestone, while still adhering to imposed milestone constraint. This is primary type of float. So total float is the float uh, by which we can delay activity without delaying the project in debt. Free float, this is the amount of time an activity can be delayed without delaying the early start date of successor activity. Project float, this is the amount of time project can be delayed without delaying externally imposed project debt. Negative float a amount of time beyond project's completion. So how we can determine critical path? Here is one example. Uh, project start at duration zero, D start and takes six six months. A start and take four months. F is starting after D and A and taking seven months. <coughs> Similarly, E, G, B, H, C and project ends. <coughs> so, 
so how we can uh, determine different paths by forward pass path uh, forward pass method and backward pass method uh, first uh, we will discuss forward pass method this path is used to determine critical path starting start from beginning of the project and determine how fast you can finish the activities until we reach end of the project in backward pass method we start from end of the project editor and determine the test start date of each activity so that you can still end the project at the earliest possible date first this is uh, if we see this example this this data is taken into consideration here this is project start a is uh, starting from 0 to 6 months and then uh, d is starting from 0 to 6 months a and d are from start of the projects and taking uh, 6 months and 4 months respectively let's see here d is starting from start uh, sorry a is starting from start of the project and taking 6 months Similarly, D, uh, it is uh, starting from start of the project and taking four months. Then, <coughs> here, A, six months is given to A. So, we will change here also. This should be six and this should be four. change it now this should be 4 and this should be 6 <coughs> a f is starting after d and a and is taking 7 months f is starting after d and a and is taking 7 months E is starting after G, uh, D and taking 8 months. E is starting after D and is taking 8 months. <coughs> so D is finishing uh, uh, at month 4. D is 4 month activity and it is finishing in uh, 4 months. So E will start at month 4 and will end at 12 because it is uh, at a month's activity so if we see from here early start and early finish so if we complete all these this will be our network now backward path method backward pass method sorry. let's see backward pass method we will start from end of the project and uh, we will see latest dates this is uh, uh, this uh, activity is uh, <coughs> activity b is 5 months activity so end of the project is 33 it must uh, start at 28 so it, it can end uh, finish at 33 same uh, here this is 8 months activity c is 8 months activity it must start at 25 uh, so it can end at uh, 33 these are the latest in dates uh, start and finish dates similarly uh, activity h is uh, 7 month activity and this should finish before activity c Activity C is uh, mm, starting at uh, sorry. Uh, activity H must finish before start of activity C. Activity C is starting at 25, so it must finish before before 25. So if uh, it is finishing before 25 and this is seven month activity, it must start at uh, 18. So the from here mm, we have. Uh, perform forward uh, pass method and 
uh, backward pass method and this is our uh, network now now from here we will uh, and determine uh, paths of in our schedule let's see first path is d g h c and in this is our first path d g e h c and in and it is taking 32 months let's see it here path one is d D, G, E, H, and C. It is D, G, E, H, and C. Here I have mentioned uh, E before H. It should be after H. Let's see now. It is uh, D E D E G H C D E G H C C is E is making problem for us. It is before G. So our path is now D E G H and C, and it is taking. 4 plus uh, a 12 plus uh, 5 17 plus uh, 7 20 17 plus 7 is 24 and 24 plus 8 is 32 so this path is taking 32 now the sec second path is start d f g h c end d f G H and C int. This is taking 4, 7, 11, 16, 23, and 31. It is taking 31. Third path is start D F B E uh, D F B int. And this one is taking 16. D F B int. 4, 11, 16. <laughs> <coughs> fourth path is a f g h c <coughs> and it is uh, taking 33 let's see here d uh, a f g h c int so this is 6 plus 8 uh, sorry 6 plus 7 13 plus uh, 5 18 plus uh, 7 25 plus 8 33 same a f b end it is taking uh, 18 so th these are paths in our schedule so here if we see the longest path is 33 and it is a f g h c in so 33 is our critical path and 32 is our near critical path So this one, this one is our critical path. Shown also the relationships are shown in red. So this one uh, start a start a f g h c end. This is our critical path. Start a f g h c end, and this one is near critical path. Second method was schedule compression. This technique is used to shorten the schedule of uh, shorten the duration of schedule without making any changes to scope. So for this, there are uh, two techniques. One is fast tracking, and uh, the second one is uh, crashing. Fast tracking is doing activity on critical path that were uh, in series before and doing them in parallel before let's say our activity a and b are uh, finished to start uh, and are in uh, on critical path and both are five days activities so one technique first in fast tracking what we do 
we make them we make the relationship from finish to start to start to start before a is uh, b is starting before a finish now if we make the relationship start to start it means that both will uh, start simultaneously at same time so we make them in parallel or we can also make part of the activities uh, in parallel for example if we want to make uh, uh, activity a two days before uh, activity b so we will make a start to start relationship to b with leg of two so it will take two days then we will start by this technique how uh, what we achieved uh, before the critical path was 10 days now if we make it start to start so both are starting at day 0 and finishing at day 5 so now our schedule duration is 5 days we can shorten our schedule uh, like that if we partly make them parallel like uh, activity A is uh, starting two day. Activity B is starting two days after activity A. Mm. Then our schedule duration will be eight days. So this is one way of uh, to make our schedule shorten. The other way is crashing. In fast tracking, care should be taken because when uh, when we make activities on parallel. Uh, it means that uh, our schedule is now more risky there are two activities uh, going parallel uh, on our critical path so we have to focus on two activities it means that schedule is more risky and crashing everything ha uh, has uh, advantage and disadvantage so same uh, fast tracking and crashing has, uh, have advantages and disadvantages. So in crashing what we do, we add more resources uh, to perform the activity in short time. For example, we have one room and um, four person are making the room in, uh, in 10 days. Now if we make the uh, uh, if we in, uh, increase the resources to 8, so if 4 person are uh, constructing the room in uh, 10 days, the 8 person will construct the same room in uh, 5 days. So by this way we can also uh, shorten our schedule. We will add these resources only to the activities on critical path. But disadvantage of this one, mm, it always added cost uh, adding more resources means it will add cost so these are the uh, two techniques how we can uh, shorten our schedule other uh, techniques are cut scope cut scope means before we were making room with all the standards now we will make it we will make it with low standards like mm, some uh, we will skip some of the activities for example some of the decoration activities painting activities so by this way we can uh, start uh, we can shorten our schedule but what this will uh, result in this will impact customer satisfaction or customer will not be satisfied from uh, us and this must uh, this need proper approval proper and official approval without official approval you can't cut score cut quality uh, this uh, by cutting quality it means we can uh, execute our activities uh, quickly but this also impact our uh, customer satisfaction customer will not be happy if we uh, we, we uh, give them the final product uh, with the, uh, low quality everyone uh, need high quality our time this is kind of uh, crashing like adding resources or you can add overtime to same resource 
but this uh, like we have mentioned before it will add extra cost so what we will do which uh, technique we will apply you have to uh, see the scene and the situation of the project uh, and uh, it depends on the project situation project uh, like terms uh, of the projects and there you can choose the best available option a resource optimization this technique adjust resources there are two ways to resource op uh, optimization resource leveling this technique allows to leave uh, level peak of resources it lengthens the projects uh, for example uh, if activity if resource uh, engineer is working uh, 16 hours for January, we can make the activity uh, to from one month to two months, and the engineer will, will work from January uh, will work in January and February. Resource optimization. This is a special case of resource leveling. This technique level resources only within the limits of plot, so the completion dates are not affected uh, this is same this would be uh, the option number one but resource optimization uh, level only those resources uh, do uh, resources on those activities which have floats so the project in date will not affect Monte Carlo analysis this is computer based technique on This, takes, uh, uh, this technique can give probability of following completing project on specific time, complete, completing activity on specific time, the overall project risk. This is software based technique, it will give the following results. Critical chain method. This technique uses network diagram and critical path to develop a realistic and formal schedule. This makes task to happen as late as possible and assign buffers to the task so after all these techniques uh, and you analyze your schedule and you think that your schedule is good enough now so you have to represent your schedule to the clients to your owner to your boss to your project so there are ways to represent your schedule and these techniques these ways we will uh, discuss in the next coming